Hello, Hidden Gems. Thank you for your uh, patience as we started a little bit later tonight. John restarted his computer and then I had to restart mine. So working from home, hashtag working from home. And also thank you for your patience while you anxiously awaited to know what our topic was going to be tonight. Uh, we we had a, a good solid suspicion at what our topic would be, but John, as always, has to really deep dive and make sure he knows everything he can before he goes live. And that happened, and we are able to announce that today is another episode on the Jared Bridegan Chana Gardner case. I mentioned in my member live that this case has really been intriguing us. Uh, Jared Bridegan. Well, I'll let John share the details. And we also have an incredible playlist now that has been built, uh, helping anyone that wants to follow, get caught up on this case. And I recommend you do because it is just getting started and we're going to see this case through. But Jared Bridegan was gunned down in front of his two-year-old daughter and uh, his now ex-wife and her husband, now her second ex-husband, John's going to answer that for us, uh, until recently, uh, her husband, Mario Fernandez, uh, along with a hitman, um, Henry Tennant, were all arrested in this young father's death. Murder, I should say. And then, you know, you throw in Jose Baez being her attorney. He was also Casey Anthony and Harvey Weinstein's attorney, just to name two of the very high profile <clears throat> um, cases he has covered and then throw in that Shanna Gardner comes from a incredibly wealthy family, the owners of the MLM crafting company stamping up. You got a bit of everything in this case. And the one thing we all want is justice for Jared. And with that, I'm about to have a coughing fit. So I'm going to let you take over sweetheart. Okay. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that was a sufficient introduction, but I, I would recommend, okay. I would, I would recommend our listeners who are not familiar with this particular case to go listen to our previous episodes on the Shanna Gardner case. Those were released last fall. Is that right, Lauren? I want to say October, November. Correct. So, yes. so the, the, the reason we're doing the show tonight is because there's been a huge number of documents that supplemental reports that have been released publicly in the last week, two weeks, and in fact, over 500 pages. And there are a number of pieces of evidence I think that are interesting. For me, the most interesting component of the reports has been the interviews. So there's there's some really fascinating interviews. You know, the, the news in Jacksonville in particular is discussing primarily the interviews with Shanna Gardner and Mario Fernandez Saldana. But they're neglecting a lot of these other interviews that that I was able to kind of look through. And I probably missed some, by the way. I haven't had time to go through all the the documents in detail. But, but I think we can start putting some pieces of this puzzle together. And I think we can start considering motive. And... There's the, there's the, there's some tidbits here I think that that people aren't going to be aware of that are going to be really critical on this case, and I don't know if that means the prosecution is going to pick up some of this or not. I, I I mean, but from my perspective, from a psychological perspective, I think there's there's so much in here that's really fascinating that we haven't seen before and we haven't talked about. So and and we're also the other thing. So I want to look at some of these interviews. We'll be talking about them analyzing them and, and kind of pu putting these pieces in the puzzle. In addition to considering the perspective of Shanna Gardner and her family. So Shelly Gardner and Sterling Gardner were interviewed by the police as well. And so you Utah, have Utah parents. Yes. You have this, this picture that they're painting that is very, very different from the one that you and I began to portray months ago 
And I, I think in fairness to the Gardner family that, you know, we, we need to consider their perspective and, and talk about it and, um, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt to some degree about their perceptions of Jared, I guess. I mean, I think we'll be poking holes in some of that, but we'll talk about two it. Sides to, two sides to every story. Right. Two it sides to every be story. Fair. It would only be fair. And so again, to reiterate for those new to this case, Shelly and Sterling Gardner are the parents who own Stamping Up or started Stamping Up. And they are the parents of Shanna Gardner, a Utah family. And, and also all of these documents, John went over hundreds of pages of documents. I want to share this too. Those will all be on our Patreon right after we're, we're done with tonight's show. Debbie. Thank you. Thank you so much for all you do for us. Uh, so, so for those that want to deep dive into these documents that John will be discussing, we have a lot and hundreds of pages will be on our Patreon account, patreon.com slash hidden to crime at the end of this episode. And there is a link in the description of this video. Go ahead. Babe. So let's start with, I want to start with, so I don't, to, to use your term, so I don't bury the lead here. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm going to take this from more of a journalistic perspective. But let's let's go right to let's go let's come out of the the blocks here tonight with what I think is one of the most incredible statements in all of these documents. And that statement, which I haven't heard the news talk about, by the way, or anybody, any podcasters, that statement comes from Shanna. From Shanna Gardner. This is her interview with this is her first interview with detectives. So to just as a reminder, the murder occurred on February 16th of 2022. And Shanna Gardner gives her first interview on March 1st of 2022. So this is the very end of her interview. And here's what she says near the end of her interview. I'm going to quote this. So this is this is obviously recorded. It's on video. It's on audio. Here's what she said. Shanna stated it, quote, Shanna stated in moments of anger, she has thought how much easier, quote, this would be, meaning when she, so when she says this would be, she means not only her life, but she means Jared's death. So Shanna says, quote, she stated in moments of anger, she, ha she has thought how much easier this would be, meaning Jared's death and her life, but ultimately she wished no ill will on them, meaning Jared and Kirsten. Kirsten is Jared's now wife who he has, or, or now widow who he had yeah. two children with. Wow. So. So she. She stated, apparently she stated not only at the end, but several times that she thought how much easier this would be, meaning her life with Jared deceased. So there's, there's a couple of points I want to make here. Thanks <laughs> for not one, bearing the lead, babe. Thanks for not bearing the lead. Yeah. Okay. Well, right. So, right. That, because I, when I read that, I almost fell out of my chair. There's, there's a, <laughs> There's a couple of reasons that's act, why I've almost fell out of my chair. Number one, this is a police interview. Yeah. If you're not if you're not on your guard and defensive and on your best behavior for a police interview within 10 days to 2 weeks of a brutal murder of your ex-husband, then that's a problem, right? So yeah. there's 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 motive here. She's giving us motive. She's telling us that her life would have been a lot easier if Jared was dead. So she says that. She says it. And she's also saying in that statement, if obviously if you read between the lines, she's saying she wishes ill on them and then she takes it back. And she says, she says, but ultimately she wished no ill will on them. So she's saying essentially, one, she's giving us motive. Her life would be easier and the custody battle would be over. And two, she's saying reading between the lines that she wants Jared dead. 
Yeah. That's so I don't, exactly I mean, that's what I took from it. That's what I took from it. I don't know how else to read this, but this is on the record. This is in her interview. It's towards the very end. For those of you who want to go look at this, this is the interview from March 1st. It's in the supplemental materials that we'll be posting. But so I want to start with that because read it one more time. Will you read it one more yeah. time? The quote now. Let me actually read. Let me read the sentence before it too. Gardner mentioned, because I think the sentence before is important, quote, Gardner mentioned that the, quote, timing of all this is weird, unquote, because she had just decided to, quote, let go of the frustration and just make the best of the situation. She stated in moments of anger, she has thought how much easier, quote, this would be but ultimately, she wished no ill will on them, Jared and Kirsten. So and No I mean, ill will, but it would sure be a lot easier for me if this could happen. It would be a lot easier if, it, right, the, it, this would be, meaning his, his, his demise, his, the Jared's death. Wow. Wow. And not only that, the, the line before, I think the sentence before is equally interesting in the sense that she said the timing of this is all weird, right? Because think about that. She's saying the timing of this is weird, but, but somehow convenient, right? Because now all her, in her mind's eye, all her troubles are gone. All her custody issues are gone. It's weird because it's almost as if she's saying she manifested it, right? She's saying the timing of this is weird because she had just decided to let go. She let everything go. Conveniently, she let everything go after Jared is deceased. <laughs> she let go of the frustration and decided to make the best of the situation. Well, that she's right. That is convenient. Like she's absolutely right. The timing of this is weird, especially if she had a hand in the timing of this, right? Like, I mean, I don't, I, this is as close you're going to get to an admission of guilt in a hmm. police interview where you're saying you're not guilty as you'll ever see in a police report. A confession when you're not confessing and you're trying to claim you're not guilty to the police in an official police interview, this is as close as you're going to get. <laughs> right. And then, wow. and then keep in mind. So this is March, this is March 1st, 2022. Keep in mind that in June of 2022, she goes on, she goes, she does one public interview. We played that in our one of our previous shows in back in the fall. That she goes on an interview with um, one of the Jack, local Jacksonville stations. It was Action News Jack, CBS, Jacksonville. She Shana Gardner does this. Denies, she denies absolutely everything. Shanna Gardner Shana denies Garner. everything. Yeah. This right. one interview she did. She did one interview. And so I think that it's... It, that's interesting too, from the standpoint of if you consider that she knows she said this, that this was a bit of a slip. Now, could you, could you, could you use this in court as a confession? No, obviously not. But I, but, but I mean, I think if I were prosecuting this case, I would certainly look at this statement and think, uh, let the jury decide, right? Like, I mean, she's yeah. saying. The timing of this is weird. She decided to let go, but conveniently he just happened to die. And oh my gosh, how much easier would this be? Meaning his, his, him being deceased, Jared being deceased. But ultimately I don't wish ill will on everyone, even though I just ish wished ill will on him. <laughs> and I just pointed out that the timing of this is also weird, right? Like, I mean, so so that statement really stands out for somebody who is absolutely innocent and has no involvement in a murder whatsoever and can completely act as an innocent person. They're not going to make this kind of statement. No. In fact, they're not even going to get near, they're not going to say that their life would be easier. And that you know, I don't know. So anyway, so yeah, I don't want to bury the lead. The lead is, I guess the lead here is that there, this, there's a statement by Shanna Gardner on March 1st, 2022, which is about as close to an admission of guilt as you'll see in a, 
formal police interview within two weeks of a murder. Short of short of somebody just abs- sort of like the Chris Watts situation where he confessed and acknowledged everything he did. I mean, she's she's clearly she's not doing that. She uh she didn't confess to the murder, but she confessed to manifesting it. <laughs> <laughs> right. She she does seem like she might be a practitioner of the secret, but I don't know. That maybe that's going right. too far. She does she does seem to imply that right that the timing is weird because maybe she manifested it. I don't know. Obviously obviously the prosecution thinks she did more than manifest it with her mind that she you know put the she yeah, put she the Yeah, she confessed to wanting motion. it. Yeah, What's she confessed that? to wa- she confessed to wanting it. Sherry Douglas says, "Yeah, right, exactly. That she's she's showing intent here. She's showing motive. She's showing that she believes without a question that her life would be improved if Jared just happened to be deceased, which is weird. The timing's weird." <laughs> Because you know, Lemisa says this, and it's interesting. It's sort of like Chad Daybell saying, "Oh, I believe in that Tammy will die. Tammy Daybell, my wife, will die, and I have another mission." He's not confessing to it, but he's manifesting it and saying, "See, I, I told you, <laughs> I yeah, knew it." That's a good point. Except for uh, the difference is that Daybell was talking about. Tammy dying for years prior to meeting Lori. Lori. So, yeah, right. I guess Daybell was putting it out there <laughs> in the universe well before he met Lori. Right. And yeah, then when he met, making videos, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. And then when he meets Lori, it 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 takes on more priority, obviously. But Gosh. yeah. Oh, Chad, I'll be at his trial in just another month and a half. So I want to start with that. There, there's a, so much in these documents that we need to talk about, but but that I don't know how. So so there you have it. You have something very close to an admission of guilt, without an admission of guilt, as you point out. Um, but it's there. So let's start with that, and then you know, of course, the the interview she did for TV is equally important because she. Any hint that she was involved, she walks that back. Any mm-hmm. hint that somehow her life would be easier, she wa- totally walks it back a few months later. Which also, as you and I have talked about, it appears that the family may have hired a PR firm to help her walk through that interview, right? Which it shows that there's something strategic about that interview. And there's something very strategic about how Shanna is handling this entire situation, right? That this isn't just some random interview she's giving. It's something that's, it's scripted and it's yes. planned, right? And it's it's a way to potentially present herself in a different fashion before, before people like us get a hold of these actual interview transcripts. Right, and... um you know, when the father of her children is gunned down, the first thing the Gardner family uh, does not do is hire a private investigator with their millions. They hire a PR firm. <laughs> like, well, you know, they have to go on. Our- okay. Okay. But yeah, yeah, we'll hear their sell. side today. We're going to hear their side t- tonight. So. So, so let, let's get into, yeah, so let's dive a little bit deeper into what is what not only Shanna is saying, but Mario and the family and some of the people that know them. Um, so another part of the interview she gives for CBS back in June of 2022, she says, essentially, I think there's questions about who could have done this, right? And one of the things she says is that Jared was involved in some quote shady business dealings. She she talked about that in the custody documents as well. And she talked about in the custody documents, she talked about the fact that she believed Jared was abusive. That she 
she said that he was fit, that he had pushed her. I think I don't, I don't have those in front of me. I should have looked at them, but that she, she essentially portrays Jared as a villain. Correct. Which is also odd because I want to say he, he did help with numerous businesses that the gardeners had and they would ask him. So it's interesting that now she's saying that he had some shady business deals, but go on. So, bef so before I get into some of the things that the Gardner family is claiming about Jared, I want to, let's reiterate, let's review some of the information we obtained from third-party sources. So you and I talked to a lot of mission companions. We talked to people that knew the Gardner family very well. We talked to mission people. Mission companions of Shanna, to clarify. Mission companions of Shanna and Shanna. then many people that knew the Gardner family. Mm -hmm. Right. We, we, we've talked to a lot of sources that many who don't want to be named by the, I don't think any of them do, but very close to this situation and, and to the Gardner family. And I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to give some of their perspectives before we start this, just because I, I think I need to frame it with this. So, and these, by the way, some of this is going to be repetitive from our earlier shows, but one of the mission companions told us that the, the main defining feature of Shanna Gardner's personality was that she was quote controlling. She said, quote, Shanna wanted to control everything she did. She just took charge. There was no asking with her. Hmm. So she, this mission companion was referring to certain events that would occur during the mission and Shanna Gardner, I, you would so there were certain events on free days, right? And that Shanna hosted a few of those events, and she would just do everything. She wouldn't ask anyone. the The mission companions, for the most part, they saw her as extremely controlling. She needed to control everything. They one mission some of them some of the other words that some of the other adjectives they used to describe. Shanna were that she was emotionally immature. She needed, quote, lots of comfort and reassurance, that she lacked a sense of self, that she was extremely entitled. One person told us that, quote, money overshadowed her personality and ruled her life. Hmm. Regarding Jared, another person told us, quote, Jared was a pushover and she ran all, all over him all the time. So I want to I want to frame <laughs> I, though, these are from third party sources. I want to frame our discussion with some of those comments. Um, let me just there was I had a list. Oh, uh, I compiled a list of this might be helpful too. I I compiled a list of uh, adjectives that that many of these sources told us that that they believed applied to Shanna Gardner. Um, some of them were used multiple times, some were not, but I'm just going to go through this list that she was described as being, quote, kooky, nutty, off, mentally ill, unstable, moody, attention-seeking, controlling was something used a lot, entitled was used a lot, and spoiled was used more than once. A few other people mentioned that they believe she was manipulative and obsessive, that she ruminated a lot. She couldn't let go of things. Um, and just to be fair, we also although mentioned- she let, Although she told police she'd let go of this one, but go ahead. She let yes. go, right. She just, the, the Jared was murdered, you know, 10 days previously and she just let it go. Um, right. and, and to be fair- some companions spoke positively of her. They talked about the fact that she was funny. She could be fun loving. She was very extroverted. Great storyteller. She was a great storyteller. She was a good cook. She, apparently she made some really great cookies. Um, she was very musical. She led the choir at times on the, on the mission. Let's clarify. Um, Many people are, are saying what, what is a mission companion for those new to this case? Shanna Gardner was um, a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, LDS. So we're referring to like a Mormon mission where she went when she was um, 19 years old on a mission to Spain. So these are people that were placed with her to be her mission companion and roommates. Go ahead. Okay. So um, 
So in this document, she talks about, let's begin with the, the love story with Jared. So she talks about how they met. She says, she says in the interview with detectives that she wasn't into Jared and that Jared pursued her. And because I'll, I'll, I'll read some of this. Uh, Shanna, this is Shanna. Shanna, she's quote, she stated, Shanna stated the initial date did not go well, but he kept pursuing her. Gardner stated she became quote desperate. So she decided to try to make it work. She stated they were married after two months. She stated, looking back, she wonders if Jared did not have ulterior motives, knowing she came from money. So her narrative about Jared is that she wasn't into Jared. He pursued her. She gave in, married him. And now she, she realized on March 1st of 2022 that Jared clearly only wanted to marry her for her money. You and I know, Lauren, that in talking to many, many sources about this particular case, that the, 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 the complete opposite was true. Great. That... Jared was not into her. In fact, Sterling in one in his interview, in, so in Sterling's interview with uh, on May eleventh, twenty twenty two, Sterling did an interview. Shelly and Sterling did interviews. Those are the parents of Shanna Gardner. Sterling said that Jared he even said that Jared referred to Shanna. Apparently, I don't know how he knew this, but apparently, Jared had referred to Shanna as quote a dog unquote. And then Sterling, Sterling clarifies that to say, meaning that apparently Jared did not find Shanna Gardner to be attractive. So that's a very, that's a different story too. Mm -hmm. But, but the story that you and I consistently heard was that Jared was not into her, that Shanna was actually the one who pursued him, him very vigorously and right. part of pursuing him was to, sh to shower him with money and gifts and trips and many of the things that the Gardner family has been known to do. Right. And we also heard, I just want to say another interesting story to this. You guys can hear another side is that she did do this with another. Um, this isn't the first person, the first man she did this with. She did this with another young man whose family, could, you know, said this happened to them too. And, but that young man did not end up marrying Shanna. And so the story that that Shanna is telling and the Gardner family is telling specifically is that that Jared is a gold digger, that Jared was chasing the money, he, that she had no interest in him, and that if it wasn't for the fact that he was so rabid in his pursuit of her, that she never would have ended up with him. And we know from talking to all of our, almost every one of our sources said the complete opposite. In fact, there was a there's a story, well, people can get it from our previous episodes, but a story about the, the um, what was it, a letter, right? A letter to the, written to the mission companions about how it was the worst first date she'd ever had. Um, but part of it was that Jared just simply wasn't interested in her. Right. Yeah, we'll go to our other episodes for that, but yes. Exactly. So it, w the thing that stands out about that is the, the amount of projection going on, right? That how she's taking that story because, because in a way that story is painful to her in the sense that she's the one being rejected. Mm -hmm. She's the one who's do doing the pursuing. She's the one with the money to woo him over. And that's not to say that it was only money. I don't, Jared deserves better than that. It wasn't, it wasn't just money. Correct. that won Jared over. So, you know, Shanna has a lot of positive qualities. I think that Jared tends to be a bit of an introvert. I think that just maybe to some degree that Jared was the one who she used the terms that, that she says she became desperate. I think that, that it, it was probably the opposite that the, I don't know if Jared felt desperation, but I think he was, overwhelmed by her relentless pursuit of him 
And at some point, I guess, for whatever reasons, we'll never know, Jared's not here, but that he gave in and he ended up marrying her. So one of the mission companions did tell us that the that Shanna's primary motivation was that she wanted to be married and have kids. And Jared seemed like a good person to settle down with. He was, he seems to have, by all counts, seems to have been a very kind person. And he seemed like a good candidate for her to be a good father. So that, I think that's part of the equation too. But, but you have all this projection here in the sense that Shanna is essentially reversing the story because she can't acknowledge the fact that she was the one pursuing. Mm-hmm. She doesn't want to. She doesn't want to present that narrative because then it makes her appear to be the aggressor. And so one of the things she's doing here, and that she does throughout this interview, is she portrays Jared as being the aggressor, as being the controlling one. And again, this is all projection. So one of the things she says is that Jared never let her have friends. Right. And then she says that Jared was very controlling and abusive. But then. She also says to the detective, and I'm going to quote this because it's important. She says, quote, Jared was never physically or verbally abusive. And then she also, she goes on to say that she could count on one hand how many times he yelled at her throughout their entire relationship. So meaning obviously that he rarely raised his voice or yelled at her even when they were having constant conflict. So, right. So here you have the, I think one of the interesting things about this interview with Shanna Gardner is you have all these contradictions, right? right? You have, you have someone who's in a lot of turmoil over what happened, meaning that Jared was murdered and she's trying to present this perspective that, she believes that, that the detectives will accept, I guess, right? She's trying to convince them that, that Jared's the villain and that somehow Jared had something to do with this, which, by the way, Mario plays into because Mario says, uh, this is a quote from Mario's uh, interview with detectives. This is And from, I want to hear this. Yes. Let's hear this about is March this. 1st. This is from March 1st also. Here's what Mario says. And so this is new, new information. Okay, what Mario says. Uh, so the detectives, uh, Fernandez Saldana, Mario, so Fernandez Saldana was asked what he thought happened to Bright again. Fernandez Saldano stated it was a big speculation, but he stated, quote, you need to get in line if you're looking for people who don't, who didn't like him. Hmm. Do you catch that? So he's saying that Jared, Jared had so many enemies that you need to get in line. If you're look, but in other words, there's a massive line of people that would have wanted to kill Jared. That's that's essentially what he's saying. And he goes further and says he would go on to explain there were plenty of people at Bright Against Church who didn't like him. So he's he's pointing the finger at people at his church. And yes, Jared was LDS as well. Somebody asked earlier. So wait, wait, wait. So. So Shanna's saying, yeah, I wanted him dead, but you know, I'd let it go. And Mario's saying, dude, don't look at me. Do you know how many people there are that wanted him? That how many but enemies it, it, he had? It's right. It's it's and we'll we'll dig a little deeper into this, but it's part of this attempt to portray Jared as the villain, as correct. As you know, that he's in these shady feelings. Right. <clears throat> um so there's one of the interviews with the woman was with a woman named Valerie Curry and Valerie Curry knew Shanna from church and also knew her. I, I'm not quite sure exactly, but she knew her from church and she apparently had a friendship with Shanna Gardner and Shanna. She didn't know Jared by the way, but Shanna would talk about Jared and Shanna would often refer to Jared as quote, a hothead. She told this Valerie Curry many times that Jared was controlling and impatient. Um, 
that she, Shanna, in an interview, she described Jared as, quote, bipolar. <laughs> the gardeners referred to him as reclusive and a hermit. They sometimes said he was a loner who wouldn't come out of his hotel room and that he could be quiet at times. So, you know, so those I mean, two very different. Those are two very different. You're either bipolar or angry with some shady business dealings or you're a recluse. And like, what is it? Those things don't all mesh for me either. Well, that, that's exactly my point is that, that you, that, and so again, like the, the Sterling, here's, 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 this is a quote from Sterling's interview. He Shanna's said, Jared, father, or Shanna's father. Okay. Right. Sterling said uh, of Jared, quote, he was pretty belligerent and quote, he was, he could be pretty fiery. Right. But they're also saying that he's a, he's a, he's reclusive and a hermit and a loner and quiet and never physically abusive, never verbally abusive, never yelling. Even Mario. So Mario presents the same image of Jared. And then Mario says, and this is a quote from Mario. Quote, he's not a confrontational person. So, so, so his father-in-law is saying he's fiery, but his ex-wife's new husband saying he's not confrontational. Yeah. What is it? What is it? They're all contradicting each other. And you're There's, a psychologist. This is what you do. Figure people out. Are you, are you getting a picture of Jared through all these <laughs> descriptions? Well, uh, the, we're going to get to this in a second. Let me just, can, <laughs> so Mario also quotes, he refers to Jared as quote, a keyboard warrior who doesn't like confrontation, right? And and so um, <laughs> this, is, this is from Sterling in his interview, by the way. So Sterling says, quote, every time I tried to ask Jared questions, Shanna would always answer for him. Sterling says that. Sterling says that. Every time I tried to ask Jared questions, Shanna would always answer for him. So who's every the time I tried one? every every time I tried to talk to my son-in-law, my my daughter would interfere and interject and, and control the situation. Okay, exactly, right. And so I think I think what what's what's happening here is you have a lot of projection. Obviously, that these folks are very confused about. They know that Jared is a fairly quiet, un, unassuming guy. We've heard that from people that know Jared pretty well. You know, it is. Does that mean that Jared was the perfect human being? No, he wasn't. I'm sure that in his marriage, there were that he had a lot of frustrations. We know he had huge frustrations on the, over the custody battles. Yes, I'm sure he that raise his children right. I'm sure that there were there were issues in the marriage where he he must have been frustrated. He probably became upset more than a few times. Like so, so, but, but I mean, that's different. This idea. And also, by the way, this thing about saying in this interview on March 1st, that he was never physically or verbally abusive and then walking that back. So she walks that back. Um, well, no, I, I'm taking she, in, in the custody in the custody paperwork she walks it back here in this interview. What she says in the custody paperwork is that he was physically and verbally abusive. Hmm. Right. So here, is. here she's actually giving us an, a more, I think a more honest portrayal of Jared and, and, and she doesn't, I don't know why, but she doesn't clearly understand that she's essentially saying this guy was pretty passive. You know, this guy didn't ever physically or verbally abuse me. He rarely yelled at me, right? And then, but then Mario and the family and Shanna are also trying to contradict that. That I, I think there's this, this inability to really, you know, their, their, their narrative works better if they sell Jared as being this angry, controlling, villainous guy that somehow was wrapped up in, Right, shady business dealings, or, um, or, or you know, okay. So, so again, Valerie Curry, um, who's a friend of Shanna's, she later says that it, she does an interview with detectives. She says in her interview 
that Shanna described it as quote road rage. The cause was road rage. So in other what? words, she's yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is real. I read all of these. I haven't read it all yet. I'll be with my Patreon. Our Patreon's reading all of these with all of you. Wow. So right, road rage, but the the road rage narrative doesn't work if Jared is this calm, passive guy. Right? Cuz the raid narrative assumes that Jared is Jared is this out of control con controlling hothead that Shanna is telling everyone about, right? That Shanna is also telling Valerie Curry that he's, quote, a hothead. And so she's going to accept that narrative because she doesn't know better. She doesn't know Jared. Um, but it's interesting. So they, there's this, this other person. Her name is Taylor Lees, who is close with Mario. In fact, she, okay. she dated Mario for a bit. They interviewed her as well because Mario made a trip to North Carolina in March – of 2022 shortly after the murders and he he talked to some people and they were interested to, to hear what he said to them but what mario yeah, said so am what, i so am i i always love an ex coming in with an interview let's hear this i'm ready okay well we're, i'm i'm just going to i'm throw i'm not going to get to the whole thing i'll i'll get to taylor lees in a minute but what he tell what mario tells taylor lees so the important point here is that within 2 to 3 weeks of the murder you have Shanna telling this friend it was road rage that somehow Jared was like bumping another car and the guy got out and killed him or something. Right. So, and then you have Mario telling Taylor Lee's within the same time frame, within three weeks, he's telling Taylor Lee's that quote, it was a hit and run, which by the way, a hit and run, I mean, a hit and run, like what, <laughs> what isn't a hit and run like you you hit somebody's fender and you leave the scene? Like I guess in Mario's mind, a hit and run is you get out of a car and you kill someone, you murder them, and then you leave. But That's I guess just a hit and run. It's just a hit and run. Bullets, hit and run. So if if you're developing this narrative that Jared is a villain and he's angry and controlling and a hothead and all this stuff impatient, right? That narrative is has to fit these motives. And the motives that they're trying to sell in the first month after the murder are road rage, hit and run, right? They're they're not gonna, they're obviously not gonna sell the real cause. They're not gonna tell us the real motive. Or I mean, I guess right. Shannon kind of did. I just read it. She kind of told us her real motive, but obviously they're not gonna tell you this is a murder for hire, because <laughs> potentially they're both involved in that. So, so what's interesting about her interview is that you, the story about how they met, the story about Jared being this bipolar, you know, abusive guy is clearly a story I think that they're manufacturing in order to sell these motives related to road rage and hit and run. And I think there's a lot of projection going on. The other thing that they say about Jared is that he's obsessed with money. And the Gardners say this in their interview as well, that, that Shelly Gardner actually says, I wish she says this, you go read it. I know it's hard to believe. She says, I wish I had just paid Jared. I'm, I'm just paraphrasing. I'm not reading. I have her interview here but this, she says this is jared gar this is jared brightigan's ex-mother-in-law shelly i'm Shannon. sorry I, I meant jared brightigan yeah to, to shelly shelly gardner right is yes shanna's mother shanna's mother is, is she says to the detectives i wish i had just paid off jared i wish i had given him more money because i could have bought him i could have bought full custody for Shanna. You know, skip out love, you know, you can just buy, you can just buy kids. <laughs> like This is what everybody's thought. And this is what they're, wow. And, and by the way, everyone, um, Shelly and Sterling after Jared was killed and Shanna, their daughter was arrested. They did take custody of their, grandchildren so shelly's also implying that she has the same motive like uh maybe we wouldn't this wouldn't have happened if we had just paid jared more money 
for the kids? She didn't say that this wouldn't have happened, but she implied that if she had paid off Jared, if she'd given Jared enough money, he would have relinquished custody to Shanna. And that she wishes she had just paid him more money to resolve the custody issue, which, as you and I know, one of the reasons Jared was so upset was because he didn't have a lot of money. Right. And he wouldn't re- he refused to rel- relinquish custody and he stayed in the fight. Right. He wanted to raise his children. So it's actually with her. not, not, you know, just with her. Right. So it's actually quite the opposite that the Jared, Jared was barely able to stay in the fight for custody because he didn't have money. Right. That it's, but again, you know, and, and this goes back to some of the original sources we talked to about Shanna and um, this is from the, again, I'm going to, this is from one of our original sources, somebody very, somebody close to Shanna that knew Shanna. Well, the, the source said, that Shanna was always bragging about her wealth. She saw money as a measure of her self-worth. Yeah. She, there was never any accountability in Shanna's life. She always got what she wanted. So to me, and I'm not going to reveal this source, <laughs> she said, to me, murder was not shocking because she believed she could buy her way out of it or people would take the fall for her. Somebody told us that. Yeah. Someone did. So there you go. So who, so the question again, if, if we're talking about projection, who's the one obsessed with money? Is it Jared or is it somebody else? Right. Could like, be, couldn't be those that own stamping up <laughs> that, that made, that made Jared sign a prenup that made Shanna heiress that paid her when she gets married, that gives the family stipends. When they sure there's that it's got one be. of the one of the arguments. So let's continue with this whole narrative about Jared being this controlling, abusive guy. But one of the arguments that um, that was made. So another thing that that so Shanna referred to in the in the interview with detectives, she referred to Jared as quote paranoid after the divorce. And, um, uh, you know, so she's, again, she's portraying him as someone with mental health issues and his paranoia was, you know, apparently increasing or escalating after the divorce. But, um, one thing that, so let's talk about that for a second. So one thing Jared said in his custody battle was that Shanna was putting cameras without his consent. Shanna was putting cameras all over the home home when, when she would come visit without his consent or knowledge. And. Well, he's um, living with his new wife and has his new family. Well, this is, I think this is around the time of the divorce around the time of the divorce or a little after. So Bradley bird, B Y R D in an interview from June 16th of 2022. Bradley is the owner of a tattoo studio in Florida, St. John's, Florida. Shanna got a lot of tattoos after the divorce. Here's what Bradley says about the cameras. Bird, Bradley Bird, stated in the article he read about an incident where Gardner was accused of placing cameras in her home. His home. Bird, Bird, Bird advised. Gar- Bird stated that Gardner would talk about this while at the tattoo shop. In other words, what? so so Shanna's story was that Jared was paranoid because of these supposed cameras that she denies she put in the home, and here this guy Bradley Bird is confirming that when when. Um, when she would come in for tattoos, she would talk about the cameras and how proud she was of placing these cameras in the home and essentially spying on Jared. So let's think about that for a minute. 
Like if somebody were placing cameras in my home without my consent or authorization, yeah, I'd be paranoid. <laughs> right? Like they're absolutely. If he's paranoid, there's clear, you know, and I'm, I don't think he is, but clearly he's concerned about these types of covert operations going on around him. Well, he called, he called out what we now know uh, she was truly doing. Thank you, Bradley Bird, for confirming. And she says, you're paranoid. That's gaslighting. And it's also showing she can't be trusted. She's not telling the truth. She's deceptive. Thanks, Bradley Bird. <laughs> Keep it coming, Bradley. Keep it coming. Bradley, we'd love to have you on Hidden True Crime. Oh, well, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about Bradley a little more in a minute, by the way. So we're, we're just okay. getting started. We're just getting started with Bradley. Um, cause Bradley, <laughs> I'm sure Bradley, my guess is that Bradley's going to be called for the prosecution. So I'm not sure he's going to be talking to us, but, um, let's keep talking about, so let's keep talking about Shanna's interview. There's, there's other moments in here. So I, I think. I think I've covered most of the contradictions and kind of this idea that she's portraying Jared. She's kind of projecting onto Jared many of the qualities that she has. Hmm. This idea of, that she's calling him controlling, she's controlling. She's calling him abusive. We know from talking to someone that lived close to them that they would hear. I, I don't, I got to be careful with this source. So let me. This source told us, quote, Shanna yelled at him, meaning Jared. Shanna yelled at him, belittled him often in front of others. She would berate him for small mistakes. You could hear them fighting throughout the neighborhood. So, right, the idea about Jared being somehow belligerent and abusive and like who, who I don't know. Right. It's, it's, this is a projection. It's a projection. Okay. So this let's, let me just, so I think let me end. So I'm, I'm almost done here with Shanna's interview or, or, you know, kind of critiquing some of it or, or explicating it, but. And again, these will all be on Patreon. If you want to read these interviews, patreon.com slash hidden true crime. We were able to get hundreds of pages of documents. Everything that the news has been talking about with the Bride Again case, we have the originals. So that's where you can get them all if you're, if you're interested to read them yourself. So, yeah. Well, so let me, let me just cover a few more little pieces here. The, um, when after the divorce, so this is from the interview with Shanna again, this is from March 1st after the divorce was finalized, quote, Jared did not want to be in the same room as Shanna. They had separate parent teaching teacher conferences and they would, con they would conduct doctor's appointments via phone. However, Shanna Gardner stated that quote, she would, that she would, quote, just show up since she, quote, did not care. So in other words, Jared is, is trying to set a boundary and they're having this contentious divorce. And Shanna is saying, I don't, I'm, I don't care. I'm just going to show up. You can't stop me. Right. Right. There, there's this, so again, this is one of those moments in this interview where, I mean, first of all, I can't believe she's saying this to the detective. <laughs> <laughs> she's essentially telling the detective, I, I don't care what he wanted. Like I just took what I, I just showed up. I didn't care. If he said, don't come, please don't come to the doctor's appointment. I've got this handle. I would just show up. Right. I, mean, I was thinking you guys didn't need to hire a PR firm. You needed to hire a psychologist to help you through these police interviews. No, they needed to hire a bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> but the the so what, what why is this important i mean because many of these qualities that i initially mentioned of about that what might apply to shanna 
are are so clearly evident in this type of attitude, this type of statement, right? So um, there's there's obviously the sense of entitlement, like she can just show up. There's a lack of empathy. She doesn't care what Jared thinks. If Jared says, please don't invade my privacy or show up at a doctor's appointment, she'll do it anyway. She doesn't care. There's no boundaries, right? There's no limits. There's just this, this indifference, you know, this, to quote one of the, you know, to talk about one of the adjectives used earlier, this is like the behavior of a rich, spoiled kid with no boundaries and unlimited sense of entitlement. And unlimited resources. And right. unlimited, right, unlimited resources. Um, a couple of other interesting points from some of these interviews. The 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 detectives at the, one of the, the detectives asked Shanna if so apparently there during the divorce there was some type of settlement and Jared received some money. I don't know the details of that. But the detective asked Shanna, hey, you know, how did your parents, what did your parents think of that? And Shanna said, <laughs> Shanna said, quote, they hated it. They hated giving him money. He, so the detective asked, was there any animosity with your parents about this settlement? She said, yep, they hated it. There was animosity. And then Shelly was asked the same question in her interview. The detective said, hey, you know, did you guys have any animosity about uh, paying Jared a settlement? I think he got like half the house. And here, this is a quote from Shelly. I'm not making this up. You can, you can read this in these interviews. Shelly said, quote, the animosity is on Shanna's part, but I just told her to let it go. Shelly said that. Yeah. Let me, Uh, wow. I believe you. I believe you. Yes. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have it immediately in front of me, but it, yes, it, so, so yes, the, 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 but the, the interesting part about that is that they're, they're both, Right, they're both portraying each other quite differently. That clearly, that Shanna is saying that her parents had a lot of animosity, and Shelly's saying, "No, we didn't have any anim animosity, but Shanna did." So I, I take that to mean that the whole family had animosity. <laughs> they're just not just not willing to own it individually. Right. So Shelly and Sterling are deflecting onto Shanna, which also shows a really dysfunctional family. Am I right? a really dysfunctional family system. No, no, that's not us. It's our daughter. But then they're going to make sure that they have these kids and Jared Bridegan's family doesn't see them either. Sorry. So I know I'm, I am processing along with all of you in chat. <laughs> it sounds very bizarre. So wait, so Shelly is saying, Oh, I'll, I should have just paid Jared more, but they were funding the custody battle, but it's not, they, they are not the ones with the animosity. It's Shanna. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, here, this is a quote. This is a quote from Shelly in her interview. This, she gave an interview with the detective on May 11th, 2022. Shelly. Shelly said, quote, she stated if they thought about it, they should have offered Jared money in exchange for full custody of the kids. She said Jared was always just about the money. She felt that if they offered him money, he would have given up custody of the kids. Jared was also vindictive and money was super important to him. That sounds like projection. We have we have a video of Shelly Gardner saying sweet sweet revenge. <laughs> this is well, I, I should let the psychologist analyze this. Uh, I know what I think, but okay, go on. Okay, okay. So let, we'll move on to Mario in a second, but I want to read one other quote from Shelly in her interview. She says. <laughs> 
Oh, man, you can't make this stuff up. She says, quote, you can't ever tell Shanna what to do because she would do the opposite. Okay. So, again, getting back to this idea, <laughs> getting back to this idea of limits and entitlement, and right, she's essentially saying that that her, her daughter is – is rebellious, oppositional, maybe immature, men, childish, right? Some of the qualities we've already talked about that that nobody's going to hold Shanna down. If she wants something, she's going to get it. And there's no reasoning with her because if you try to reason with her, she'll do the opposite, right? So um, a lot of people are saying that Shelly and Donna would be, uh, Donna Adelson would be bosom buddies. <laughs> a lot of people seeing the comparisons. We do want to delve into that case as well. Both Florida cases, both Florida cases. It's very interesting. Okay. So let's, um, let me. So I'm saying adult oh. oppositional defiant disorder. <laughs> right. Well, actually, yeah. I mean, actually as an adult, that would be more like antisocial personality disorder, but I'm not diagnosing that. Obviously, but are there some traits here of being antisocial? Clearly, does that mean she's a diagnosis of that? I, I don't know. I, that would, I guess, that's going to be up to a psychologist, maybe that goes goes into the jail and does an interview if that's necessary for the case. But and when we have those, and when we have those results, we can talk more freely. <laughs> You're such a good licensed psychologist. Never matter. Can't diagnose. Never well, matter. Yeah. Um, are there some traits or qualities of, of antisocial? I mean, her mom, her she Shelly just, <laughs> Shelly just gave me one of, she just gave us one of the biggest traits that she's extremely social. Yeah. Antisocial not being like, I don't want to go to the prom in high school. Antisocial as in. As in breaking society's rules and norms and. Psychopathy. Laws. Sign. Right. As in. Murdering someone without any remorse. <laughs> the father of your children. That would be that would be pretty oppositional. Um, let's go back. So this is and this is so also. Cool. Let's go back to Bradley Bird. Um, if we're going to move on to Mario, this I think we've got to talk about Bradley Bird here. The tattoo studio owner did an interview on June sixteenth, twenty twenty two. This is probably the second biggest bombshell in all of the interviews. And Bradley okay. Bird, by the way, I haven't seen anyone talk about Bradley Bird, but Bradley already told us that Shanna would talk about the, the videos in the home. But now listen to this. We like Bradley Bird. Keep it coming, Bradley. Keep it coming. Okay. This is the second biggest bombshell next to Shanna's pseudo confession. Here's Bradley Bird. Bradley stated after a tattoo session, Gardner invited several employees out for drinks. Bre uh, Bird advised during this time, Gardner would talk too much about her divorce with Jared Bridegan. During this particular incident, meaning during their night out for drinks, Gardner informed the group her life would be easier if someone would shut her husband up. Now, notice before I continue, notice notice the the language here, right? Like we're getting back to this easier thing. That's that's precisely what she said in her statement. Says, Brad, this exact same thing. It's been confirmed. Bradley's speaking the truth. As someone says, Bradley Bird is singing like a bird. But 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 remember on remember on March first when Shanna does an interview with Tectors, That's exactly the term she used. Correct. That she would be, life would she be easier. How her life would be easier. How easier, That's, quote, this would be, meaning if Jared was deceased. So anyway, here's Bradley exactly, using the exactly. same language, using the same right. language, which, which, which lends tremendous credibility to his statement. During this particular incident, so I'm going to read this again. During this particular incident, when they went out for drinks, Gardner informed the group her life would be easier if someone would shut her husband up. Bird stated Gardner asked the group if they know anyone who shuts people up. 
asked the group. So she's Gardner asking her asked tattoo the group friends. If, Gardner asked the group if they knew anyone who shuts people up. But police officers, I just manifested it. I let it go. I let it go. I, I did, you know, yeah, I wondered. I wondered if my life would be easier, but I let it go. But here she is asking, wow. And and I want to say, we know he's speaking the truth because it's, as you point out, it's the exact same wording. These are police interviews, the exact same wording. Bradley speaking the truth, truth bombs from Bradley. Well, he's, he's right. He's echoing the same language from March 1st when Shanna slipped or whatever, or, 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 you know, I don't know if she slipped, but she, she certainly let her guard down a little bit by, by saying essentially she wanted Jared dead, you know, typically, typically that's not something you would say in a, in a police interview where your ex-husband is murdered two weeks prior, but okay. So I also like what Rebecca Randall says. OMG, she thinks that tattoo artists are hit people. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, I, mean, I do think there is something funny to that because I think tattoos were a bit of rebellion. She she grew up, she was Mormon. She comes from a very conservative family. She served an LDS mission. She gets divorced. She starts getting tattoos. So yeah, maybe she did. I don't know. <laughs> She's quite sheltered. So... Maybe maybe she thought I, she had the right crowd. Maybe I don't know. Maybe she's making a lot of associations with the show Sons of Anarchy. I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure. Right. I'm not sure what she's thinking. But obviously, she feels safe enough with this group to. She feels safe enough with this group to ask if there's someone who can shut him up. I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't think it takes a genius to figure out what shut him up means. And little does she know that Bradley's sitting there taking notes, ready to talk. Ready to sing like a bird. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have to admit it's a, it's kind of an unusual moment when you're you're asking to shut someone up. I, I, you know, I guess the best way to shut someone up is to obviously is to murder them, then they can't talk. So Right. I don't think she's referring to duct tape. That's what Jody Hill no. does. She no. No, right. She's she's definitely not referring to duct tape. Right. Shanna's breaking bad. So she's like, who I need are a bunch of tattoo artists to get some beers with me. Then I'll tell them how I really feel. Gosh. Oh. All right. So let's I think we've there there's more in here we can talk about, but let's let's move on to Mario. Um, so between, I don't know, you know, between, <laughs> between Bradley's statement and Shanna's own statement in the interview, I, you know, it's just, I, 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 <laughs> I don't, I don't I'm see loving the that. comments we're getting over here too. She's slumming with the middle class people. She's like, these are the middle class folk. I could tell them that I need someone to shut him up. <laughs> Sorry. So, Shel sheltered rebellious. Uh, women aren't yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, let's. So, as long as we're on this theme of shutting people up, let's move on to Mario because you're gonna we're, we're gonna encounter a similar theme. So let's start with let's start with Mario and his interview from March 1st of 2022, which was, so he gave an interview at the, on the same day. Uh, but I think he gave his interview before Shanna or maybe after, I, um, hold on. It was, it was after. So he, he did his interview after, after Shanna's interview. Um, so they were talking about, they were talking about how Jared Bridegan had wished that he had some issues with the children attending therapy because he was worried. Um, uh, he was worried what might be said about him, which by the way, during custody battles, 
when when children go into therapy during custody battles, both parties, both adults have to approve it. Okay. For, for, for precisely that reason, because think about if if let's say that Shanna goes into therapy with the child, right? That that she'll influence the child, or she'll she can make statements about that might alienate the other parent. So it's it's really important during a custody. I've, I've been in this situation, believe me. I've worked with kids too. So um, it's really important to get consent from both parents that if the child's in therapy, especially during contentious custody battles, both parents know. They know how the therapy is going to be done. They want to know if one of the other parent is going to be in the session, whether they can influence it. Right? All those are relevant. Mm-hmm. But this upsets Mario. So Mario says on that issue, Mario says from the March 1st interview, he said, this led Fernandez Saldano, I'll just call it, this led Fernandez Saldano into talking about control over the children. Fernandez Saldano stated he felt the kids would be better off if Gardner had control of the custody. Fernandez Saldano stated he wanted to push Bright again into a corner to force everyone together on the children. Fernandez Saldano advised they could just, they could quote, just suck it. And he doesn't care if they are uncomfortable. Fernandez Saldano stated he is confrontational and he could quote, shut them down if they had control of the custody. Fernandez Saldano continued to advise that they wanted to push for a social investigation. Wow. Wow. So tell me, <laughs> getting back to this theme of shutting people up, I mean, clearly he's angry I'm, in this interview. He doesn't care what the other party thinks. He doesn't care what Jared Brightigan thinks, right, or thought. This is after the murders, obviously, but he's, he's angry. He's so angry at Brightigan, Jared Brightigan. Um, and, and he's showing it here and he's telling us he doesn't care if they're uncomfortable, that he's confrontational. He wants to shut them down. Wow. The and then earlier, earlier on April 15th, he's worried that there's people that are starting to accuse Shanna of being involved in the murders. This is So this is early on. This is within a couple of months after the murders. They pull him in for another interview on April 15th. Here's what Mario says. They're talking about people accusing Shanna of involvement. Fernandez stated, quote, the problem is I am running out of, I'm going to change a word here because <laughs> okay. I have to. The word starts with an F, by the way, but I'm going to change it to cares. Well, everyone, Everyone's pointing out what you've already said, but okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, I don't think I don't think I've used any. Okay, well, we're going to change I've that. Used any swear words, but okay, yeah. So, right. Fernandez stated, "Quote: The problem is, I am running out of cares to give, and I am very petty." That's a direct quote from Mario. Fernandez wow. stated. Fernandez stated he was going to go on Facebook Live and quote, "Let her, Kirsten, let her, Kirsten Brightigan, have it." because I want to shut her up. I'm seeing a pattern. <laughs> are you these seeing a two, pattern? These two are not needing a PR firm. They are needing so much more. Well, they need an arrest, which has uh, happened, but wow. I'm seeing a pattern. They really so we, want to shut Jared up. Wow. 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 These are these are things that they're they're saying in police interviews. So think about this. They're saying this on the record, on tape, during police interviews, during police interrogations. I mean, I, I you know, I don't know what the prosecution's going to do with this stuff, but <clears throat> if I was an attorney, I'm, I'm sure I'd start pulling out these little tidbits. Um. And maybe they will. I don't know. Maybe they will. But to, to start making a case that um, that these these types of attitudes 
are at the very least problematic. Um, Someone's saying it's not stamping up, it's shut it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we're a little sorry, everyone. Okay, it's fun to laugh at criminals sometimes. Some if you don't laugh, you cry. Okay. So, so let uh, I'm now I'm going to go. I think I don't know if I should go down this path, but um, so all right, let, let's go, go down. Now. That's like let, that's like a. I don't know if I should. Let's do it. It's Saturday night. It's hidden. Let's go down this path. I don't. I'm going to be care. I'm going to try to be cautious here because. Because this is speculation. This is a lot of speculation. But let, I think there, there's a question here. Actually, before you continue, okay. before you continue, CC is asking, John, please read it again. She missed who was speaking. Will you say, we set the stage, read one more time, and then let's move on to what you have. So the, the, the Mario, so this is, this is Mario Fernandez Saldana's interview on April 15th with pol the a police detective. Is that what she's referring to, CC? Okay. So Mario is is doing a follow up interview here on April fifteenth, and he's concerned that quote he's concerned especially about Kirsten Bright again that she's making public statements that he perceives to be affecting the business of Shanna's parents as well as their bakery business. He's worried that people are starting to accuse Shanna of being involved in the murders. So here's what he says. In response to the attack, in response to this topic, he says, Fernandez stated, quote, the problem is I am running out of cares to give. And I am very petty. Continuing, Fernandez stated he was going to go on Facebook Live and, quote, let her, meaning Kirsten, I'm going to let her have it because I want her to shut up, unquote. So Jared's widow. Th he is threatening Jared's widow, the mother of Jared's two children. Speaking out because her husband's been gunned down in front of their two-year-old. He says he's right. petty and that he's going to shut her up. And he has, so he has concerns that he has concerns clearly that Kirsten is affecting the family business, meaning stamping up and he's affecting their, at the time they were still operating their, their cookie business. Wasn't it a, a baking company? Shanna made cookies and delivered them. Right. We've got over. crafting and stamping and cooking. Well, no, Shanna specifically had a biz, a bakery business where she made cookies. Yeah. So it's it's affecting their business. It's affecting their income, even though clearly the, the Shanna never had to worry about her income because her family helped her. But um, he's frustrated. He's angry. He can't. He. I think he's especially angry over the fact that people are on to the possibility that perhaps he and Shanna whoever else was involved in this heinous murder. I think that, I think he know. I think he's, he's probably frustrated and surprised that people are already starting to, to think about who the suspects are. And he's probably worried that he might be one of those suspects. As Sherry says, it's always good to tell people who you're interviewing for murder, the police that you're very petty, right? It's just, <laughs> I know. I, I, yeah, I, I mean, so when you, when you go in and you do an interview like this, there's so many ways in which he's showing us who he is. He's, he's angry. He's impulsive, right? All the things that you would expect from someone who might be involved in this type of scheme, he's showing us clearly that he's more than capable of participating in a murder. Mm -hmm. So he, I, at some point, I would like to see the actual video. I, I don't think those have been released yet, but it would be interesting to see the actual video interviews with Mario to, to look at his affect and to see just how angry he really is. 
It is. It's, it's interesting. And I just want to point out the contradiction why I said, God, we've got stamping and crafting and cooking. I agree with Rebecca. It sounds like summer camp. Yeah, here we are getting interviewed by police. Like it's just, it's just so the contradiction is. I think that's what I was trying to point out. Like the the irony of all this. Okay. So let, let let's get into Mario a little bit. And I'm gonna go in and slow down chat. We're getting a bigger crowd here, okay. so people will see that. Okay. Go ahead, babe. So let let's get into to Mario a little bit. The I talked about on one of our earlier shows, I talked about that Mario had some incidents. He owned a pit bull or maybe pit bull. I think just one pit bull. I don't remember the number, but, uh, and I'm not denigrating pit bulls, by the way, for all you dog lovers, but Mario would use his pit bull to intimidate some of the neighbors. One of the neighbors in particular was, was feeding some stray cats and he went over to the neighbor with his pit bull and really frightened her. And I think the pit bull may have chased the cats off or, but anyway, the, the neighbor reported it. I, I don't remember if, I don't remember if any charges were brought, but I think there may have been some charges on that. But. Police were called for sure. Police yeah. were called. Okay. So. The reason I mentioned that is because I, I want, so there appears to be some criminal history with Mario, although we don't have, we're not privy to that. So I can't really, I, I wish I could see that. If I was doing a, a formal forensic interview with Mario, I would have access to all, his entire criminal history, including any juvenile record. But I don't have that clearly. I'm not doing a formal interview with him, but we do have these interviews. So um, let me refer you to <laughs> Megan Travostino who gave an interview with police on March 17th of 2022. Megan, she knew she was, I don't know if I would say friends, but she knew Mario through a mutual friend. She, she also knew Shanna Gardner and she stated she described Mario as, quote, hyper, and he had an intense presence. She stated that Saldana would never be anyone she would invite to her house. But so obviously she's a little intimidated by Mario, but that's that's not the that's not my real interest in, in this interview. My interest is the next part. Okay. And that is, I'm gonna read this. So the the reason I'm doing this is the reason I'm doing this is because one of the things we know about Jared is that he was extremely concerned that Mario, who was someone he didn't trust, he was very concerned that Mario was around his children all the time, and that mm -hmm. he had no control over that. That because Jared believed or heard from his kids that Mario could be aggressive. Mm -hmm. That Mario could be punitive, uh -huh. right? There were there were qualities about Mario that he was very concerned with, and so I'm gonna. I'm, the reason I'm gonna read this next story, or I, I'm sorry, not story, but this next statement from Megan Travestino, is because I want to show potentially that Jared's concerns were more than warranted. Putting aside the pit bull incident I just described, listen to this. <laughs> Okay. Travestino would go on to explain an incident involving Gardner and Saldana at a Christmas party for the gym. The gym meaning that that uh, Travestino worked out at the same gym. And they met at the gym. They, yeah. Right. Mario and Shana, Shana Gardner met at the gym. Travestino explained Saldana and Gardner drove her friend Chelsea back to their house. Chelsea was intoxicated at this time, and Chelsea's brother was unable to reach her by cell phone. Once Chelsea's brother found where she was located, he drove to Gardner's house. Okay. Once Chelsea's brother arrived, 
Chelsea was currently at Gardner's house and she was naked when her brother arrived. Saldana informed Chelsea that there was a video of her naked and he was not going to give it to her. What? Mario is a piece of work. So I don't know exactly what happened here, but clearly Megan, who's recounting this incident, is more than a little concerned that her friend Chelsea is inebriated and her brother, obviously concerned about his sister, goes over to the home, finds his sister naked with Mario lingering by her side with apparently some video that was taken of her that he won't release. And now he's taunting her with it. And he's ta- right. So what, I mean, I don't know what happened here. You can't, if, if anything sexual occurred and Chelsea's, really intoxicated. I mean, I don't know her level of intoxication, but clearly this is like starting to, this is starting to move in the direction of some type of assault potentially. And I'm I'm not saying some that's the what? case. Some type of, I think you'd have to, some type of sexual assault. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm speculating. You'd have to obviously talk to the brother. You'd have to talk to, to Chelsea and see what she remembers, but clearly there's something there's something going on here that's out of the norm. It's very, very concerning. And so when when Jared expresses concerns about having his kids alone with Mario, that's not pure fantasy. That's justifiable 110%. So, and yeah, again, that's not about that's not about Jared and Chris Kirsten being controlling. Right there. Right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know what happened in this incident, but I mean, as someone who's worked with a lot of these types of, of sex crimes, it certainly raises a lot of red flags. Right. So I, I don't know. It's a peculiar story to tell, and especially for someone who's intoxicated and then is naked in the home. I mean, what? I, I don't know. Right. It does sound like an assault happened. I, I don't know if the police investigated. I know nothing about this incident other than what I just read, but I can tell you that having read that and Mario's defiance and Mario's attitude in general, this is a problematic story to me. <laughs> and again, and then I, you wonder, and then you wonder why Jared was fighting for custody. So you can understand that too. And, and the money isn't going to buy Jared probably because he's a, good father and he wants to have some custody of his kids. This is, this is frightening. So that was another interesting little tidbit from, from all these interviews. There's so many moments like this in these documents that, you know, it's, it's really interesting to kind of pick up, you know, and of course I'm going to see them differently than, than other people. But to me, um, these moments and these incidents and these descriptions tell start telling us uh, a different story or a more detailed story than we've heard previously because we've only kind of scratched the surface. But now I think we're starting to to drill down a little bit and get a better picture of what's going on and motivations and who these people are and what's driving them. So here's... Here's the next here's the next big question I want to raise and that is why did Mario marry Shanna Gardner? Right? Yeah. I think, I think that's that's a big part of this puzzle. And I'm going to from very different backgrounds. He's very different than Jared. I think it's yeah, why did they get married? He was the right. maintenance worker at the gym. She worked out at this gym. She had had an affair with her personal trainer. She she filed for divorce from Jared. The personal trainer was no longer interested. She meets Mario. It was a very fast whirlwind romance. They get married. It's an unusual pairing. Why, Dr. John? Why? 
Tell so us why. Both, both Shanna and Mario kind of say the same things that they weren't really in love. They weren't really necessarily attracted to each other. Um, I'm not going to pull out all the statements where they say that, but so Mario, this is from Mario's interview, April 15th. He said, quote, their chemistry, meaning his chemistry with Shanna, their chemistry is divided and they had different styles on how to raise kids. He's so, you know, and Shanna says the same thing that they really, they hit it off, but it's not clear why they're getting married, right? Because there's no, there's no chemistry. There's no, not a lot of attraction. They don't have similar backgrounds. It's a peculiar situation, right? But I, I think knowing the answer to that question is going to be important in this case. So mm-hmm. here's what Mario says when, when he talks about them getting divorced, he confirmed that they were getting divorced. This is in 2022. I don't know exactly when they got divorced, by the way, but the, the and, detective. And that, I didn't know that till tonight that they actually were divorced. So that's new. That's a new update. I, I believe they were. Yeah. I don't have the exact date, but so the detective is asking about the divorce. He confirms it. Uh, and then Mario says he stated that quote, they only got married so he could help with the kids while they were dating. Let me repeat that. They only got married so he could help with the kids while they were dating. What? So let, let's wait. <laughs> so let's, let's unpack that a little bit, right? I think, so part of what he's saying, I think, is that the Gardner family, the parents, Shelley and Sterling, they didn't want this guy, this stranger to them around the kids. I assume they didn't want this stranger around the kids without more of a commitment. Yeah. So there, there appears to have been obviously some lack of trust going on. I think some of this may have been driven by the family. I don't know, but but they're they're Shanna says the same thing, by the way, that the that they got married because she needed help with the children and apparently he could provide it, which maybe that's the reason. I don't know. It it seems like a peculiar reason to get married, but that's the reason they're giving. Yeah. Some people are claiming they're still married, but separated by the way. Well, clearly they're separated. They're behind bars, but who knows? (laughs) They both said they were getting divorced, but yes. Some custody agreements limit contact until you're legally married. CC says. So let's continue. Yes. Let's go with, so you, I mean, this, this, Again, I, I'm going to point out that I, I don't. The direction I'm going here is is vague, and this is this is very speculative. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it to our gems to fill in the blanks here, but I'm gonna open up some pathways, and I'm gonna let them go down them because I. But so let's start. Let's we need to answer that question about why they got married because there's no apparent reason why they should get married. Right. Someone's like she could have hired a nanny. <laughs> <laughs> Right. She could have hired a nanny. Exactly. She right. Could have, she mean, could have let Jared and his new wife, Kirsten, watch them more. Right. So let's let's try to answer this question. Keep in mind, by the way, that when, when we when we when we go down these alleys here, remember that that Shelley and Sterling are arguing that Jared only wants the money. He's a gold digger. And that is the only reason he married Shanna Gardner. So this is an interview with Brett Parrish from May 12th, 2022. Brett Parrish is apparently is a guy who hired Mario to help with some, he owns a roofing company and he helped Mario was an employee for maybe a part-time employee. It's not entirely clear, but Mario helped him with his company. He also helped him 
get a job as a maintenance worker at the gym, the CrossFit gym where they met, where he met Shanna. Okay. Okay. So Brent Parrish is asked by the detective. He was asked, did Mario ever say how he could afford his Porsche? So apparently Mario was driving a, a Porsche, which I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, you and I aren't big on cars, right? Our, like our car's 11 years old, tw- our car's 12 years old and held together by duct tape. So we don't Y'all, really. I just, I just replaced our windshield that was so <laughs> cracked. It looked like a snowflake and, and it had been a couple of years of it just kind of growing and. I felt like I was giving away an old friend when I replaced that windshield. I was like, ah, we but, stuck but the, to it for so long. Okay, go ahead. We are not car the people. Point is, so Mario, the point has a, is that, Mario has a Porsche. The point is that cars aren't that important to us. And um, and I, I don't know how much a Porsche costs, but I don't know. Let's say 75000 maybe more. I guess it depends on the type of car. But but apparently, so apparently Mario drives a Porsche. Presumably, if you're a maintenance worker at a gym, you're not going to drive. I don't know any maintenance workers at a gym that drive Porsches, but I, I don't know. Maybe he's got some side gigs we don't know about. Brent was asked, how could Mario afford a Porsche? He said, quote, Mario was getting disability from the military and he was trying to get 100% disability. Okay, so let's stop there for a second. <laughs> Let's stop there for a second. Um, he was trying to get a hundred percent disability from the military. That's not well, sketchy. Let's stop there. Now, first of all, I've, I've worked for the VA. It's been a long time, but I worked for the VA, and I know what I know what disability is. I know how much it pays. I know about service connection, and. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know a lot of vets at the VA I worked for the drove Porsches. I think maybe a few did, you know, maybe a few of the higher level officers, but, um, but there's something else. So I want to, I'm going to go back to an interview with Taylor Lees that I mentioned earlier. This interview was on July 8th, 2022. She tells us that she believed, so she dated Mario. She knew very well. Taylor tells us that she believed that Mario left the military because, quote, he got kicked out, unquote. So uh, she also tells us that Mario was a drill instructor in the military. But putting that, I think that explains a lot, by the way, but but we're, we're not going to get to that. So, um, but it's not even clear that Mario would be eligible for disability because if he was kicked out of the military, I mean... Maybe if he had an honorable discharge, I guess that's possible. He he might get disability, but if he was dishonorably discharged, which is completely conceivable, then he wouldn't get any money from the military. Or or he okay, it depends on the circumstance and when he was in and it depends on a lot of things. He might get some disability, but certainly not enough to get a Porsche. Keep so talking Taylor. Okay. Yeah. So So Brent goes on. He says, quote, he also had a a side security job in Miami. He stated, Mario, meaning Mario stated he was also, this is the most important part. Mario stated, he told Brent, he stated he was also trying to get Shanna to be his, quote, caretaker. This sounds like an old case we used to cover. Continue. So he could get money from the military as well. Shanna can double as his caretaker. And wow. So Brent wow. is Brent is essentially so when he uses the term caretaker, I I take it to mean I I take it that Mario sees Shanna as I don't think caretaker is the right term here. <laughs> um no, it's a, I think it is actually when you are 100% disabled with the military, you can then be approved for caretakers, full-time caretakers. And I don't know if they can be spouses or not, but but yes, multiple caretakers. 
especially if they need to like feed you and dress you, you know, if Shannon needs to cook for him and feed him and dress him. Okay. Yeah. I, but I think, I think, okay. Right. So, so he's trying to, he's trying to get money for, for, for Shanna to be a caretaker, but I obviously there's another, I think the caretaker he means in the sense of giving him money, supporting him in addition to the military money. Right. I think that it, it goes beyond that. Okay. Which, which brings us to the next part. Let's, okay. let's, you know, this is going to return us to Taylor Lee's. So Taylor is the ex girlfriend or the once the woman. Right. Who Taylor is Taylor is an ex girlfriend. She lives. The girl in who North got Carolina. away. The girl What's who that? got away. The girl who got away. The girl who got away. <laughs> um. All right. So is are we getting closer to answering this question about why would why would Shanna marry Mario or why would Mario marry Shanna? So here we go. So Taylor. Saldana meant so I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna read from this interview. Quote Saldana mentioned he worked out a contract through Gardner's family to marry her. Saldana mentioned this contract in early 2021. Wait, wait, wait. A contract to marry Shanna? There was a contract to marry Shanna. There was a contract to marry, according to Taylor Lee's, Saldana had confided in her that there was a contract, which sounds like a legal financial contract. Are we talking, talking prenup? We're not talking, no, we're not talking prenup. This is separate. Okay, because Jared and Shanna had a prenup. They right, a prenup. no, this is not a prenup. They were married in 2018. There was a prenup in 2018. In 2021, the family provided a contract through the Gardner family to marry her. And I don't know, it's a little peculiar because I think they were, they were married in 2018, but there's some contract out there, according to Mario, who's confiding in his, one of his close friends, Taylor Lees, who, by the way, after when he's getting divorced from Shanna, he's, he's trying to develop a relationship again with Taylor Lees. She says that. So he's showing some romantic interest in her. So once, once, he, okay. So he's like, oh, maybe Taylor, Taylor as was a, the girl that a, got away. I'm going back and I'm going to let her know about the contract that I had a, from the Gardner contract, family to marry their daughter. Through, Go on. There's a contract through the Gardner family, even though they're married, that. Well, maybe it, it, I don't know the timelines. I, I'm going to correct myself here. That, that that Mario mentioned the contract to her in early 2021, but it, the contract could have been executed around the time they were married in 2018. However, I don't believe it's a prenup because she talks about that separately. The prenup was here, separate. That's a whole other thing. Here's the part that's most interesting. So there's this contract with the family. Which, by the way, I don't think if a prenup would involve Shanna, I guess the family could be a part of that, sure, certainly. But here's the most fascinating part of this statement. Quote, Lee's speculated, so this is speculation, but still, quote, Lee's speculated Saldana was providing protection from Gardner's ex-husband. Wait, the contract from the Gardner family was for Mario to provide protection to Shanna from Jared. Is that what, what you she's said? Saying, I think what she's saying is, and I, I don't know, There's, I, I would need some clarification, but what I take her to be saying is that the Gardner family gave, provided a contract to Mario for something, I don't know what, 
some not type the prenup. of presumably not a prenup, presumably some type of financial arrangement that involved some element of protection from Gardner's ex-husband, obviously Jared. So what is what does that mean? What is I mean what what type of protection are we talking about here? Right? Like, is he a bodyguard? Is he what's he hired to do? Right? I don't know. Shut him up. I don't I don't You're know. Not saying I, it. You don't know. I'm just, I don't know. I'm saying it. I'm just telling you that Taylor Lee that this is a crazy little clue. I, I don't again I said I'll I'll let our gems go down, you know, these rabbit holes because I don't I don't want to go too far with this, but I read this and I was I was kind of taken aback because there's really no compelling reason why Shanna and Mario need to get married. Stampin' Up does like their demonstrators. Was this a demonstrator contract? Hey, you <laughs> you uh protect our daughter from her her ex-husband and you can marry her. you can have her hand in marriage you can be a demonstrator with the stamp of the family let's um so let's let's think of so let's think about this idea of protection though right like so again if if if, if you need protection you're going to need protection from somebody who's you know more villainous or somebody who's abusive or violent or aggressive right but those are what mar that's those are things that describe mario not jared we have a statement Correct. from we have a statement from shanna in her first interview with the detective that jared was never physically or verbally abusive and almost never yelled at her so that's what does she need shanna what so where's the protection right what does she need protection for if jared is this reclusive loner who won't come out of his room and is not physically or verbally abusive, then how is that relevant? Right. But, but Taylor Lees, who doesn't know the Gardner family, she doesn't know Shanna Gardner at all. She only talks to Mario and Mario is confiding this little, apparently this little secret and confidence. I presume that there's this contract with the Gardner family. You know, maybe he's now going to say that this is the prenup. I don't know. Looks to me like it's not the prenup and that somehow this contract involves some type of protection. Prenups aren't about protecting. Right, exactly. So what is this contract? And and you know, I don't I don't know if yeah, I don't know if if this contract it would be on the record. I don't know, maybe it was a contract that was done on like, you know, a napkin. I, I don't know. I don't you know. You all want to know why I keep saying that the more we dig into this case, the more we are going to keep going. This is why. Keep going, John. Wow. So I, I think this question about this question about why they married becomes more interesting, right? If you, yeah. if you take some of these little clues that they married for the kids, but that doesn't quite add up, right? Like different parenting styles and the kids have three parents that love them at this point. Did, did he marry her for her money? And if so, how is that money? If, if it wasn't, if it was contractual, how was that money? distributed or why or what was this right I, there's a lot of questions here did he have to do something for that money was it what was he offering protection was he a bodyguard i, I don't know right, right. This, and i'll this gets, this gets really confusing he's driving a porsche he's driving he's driving a, yeah a porsche is it porsche or porsche i don't know so porsche i don't know I think it's Porsche. I don't, whatever, whatever it's, uh, it's, it's right. So, and, and does any of that factor in, does that any of that factor into the crime here? Who knows to be determined. Yep. 
So like there's I said, a lot more. There is a lot more to this case. Right. There's, hey guys, we still haven't even seen the probable cause yet. <laughs> right. Right. So anyway, um, I think that that's as far as I can go with that. Okay. Interesting. Um, other people are pointing this out. You get married and you, you aren't forced to testify against your spouse. Sometimes there's some protections for spouses. It's interesting. They're still married right now. Yeah, there was, there was in these interviews, there's a lot of talk of divorce. So this talk of divorce seems to have begun around 2022 Right. And you have the, so the crime occurs in February of 2022. And then they start talking about divorce. We know that, we know that Henry Tenen is arrested on unrelated charges in August of 2022. And shortly after, mm -hmm. Shanna moves to Washington State where her parents buy her a home. Mm hmm. She says in her, by the way, in her CBS interview, which was June of 2022, she tells the reporter she has no intentions of leaving. She's very happy in Florida. And then in August, when Henry Tenen gets arrested, he's not charged until January of 2023, but Henry gets arrested and all of a sudden she's gone. And she changes her name. So her name was Saldana. She changes it. Fernandez. 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 He's Saldana Fernandez or Fernandez okay. Saldana. Well, she changes it back to her maiden name. Correct. In Washington State. So yeah, I don't know. There's there's a lot of questions here. There are. Somebody asked if Shanna is out on bond. Um Jose Bias did attempt that and there was a bond hearing uh last week. Wednesday. But one interesting thing I will say that came out of this hearing, I watched it, was uh, Jose Bias, um, I think, had his first moment of success. Both Mario and Shanna appeared together. Shanna had street clothes on. Her hair was done. She had a blue shirt on. She looked very nice. Uh, whereas Mario was in his prison garb and shackles, looking much more like a criminal. And I'm sure that that was a, a successful moment for Jose Baez. Because if he's going to want to paint this as Mario's the guy and my, you know, my client's just innocent, you know, just an innocent young mom from Utah, he's already succeeding there. There's no, there was no jury there, but, you know, it's interesting what's already taking place. Those are my thoughts on this case. I'm sure that the, the prosecution is going to follow the money very closely in this case. And that will obviously be interesting. So seems like money is a big part of this. That's a huge part of this motive here. So, but, but yeah, I don't, you know, the, that's another question. Can you argue, would it be even feasible to argue that Mario decided to commit this murder on his own? in conjunction with Henry Tennant, without any knowledge or involvement from Shanna Gardner or the Gardner family. They would have had to have known nothing whatsoever. And we, we don't, of course, we can't really answer, talk about the connections yet because we haven't seen the, the arrest report or the probable cause statement. But, but that, if, if that's the defense, if the defense is that Mario was responsible and the mastermind You'd have to you'd, you'd have to really kind of stretch, I think, to to make an argument as to why Mario would want Jared Bright again murdered. What would be, I mean, it it <laughs> it makes right. it makes sense when you bring in Shanna, but does it make any sense if you take her out of the equation, or is it even thinkable or feasible to take her out of the equation? Yeah. Well, it, yeah. I guess I guess you could argue that his motive was that maybe he had some disputes with Jared or they didn't get along or but but I mean I don't 
for him to throw away his life and to act on his own with no for no apparent reason that that, that seems to me really reaching yeah this is true um the news talked a lot about the uh, checks that were written that have come out. The checks yeah. were paid. The checks to pay Henry Tenen were written from a bank account from a company that both Mario and Shanna owned. Mario signed the checks. Just another right. interesting thing. Yeah. You know, why did Shanna marry Mario? We don't know, but we can question things certainly now. Um, I think right. this it, is a case too to see. Go ahead. Yeah. And I mean, the reason that's such an important question is because when in reading these supplemental documents and these interviews, you start learning that they they're not getting married for the typical reasons you might expect people to get married. They're not marrying to start a family. They're not marrying because they love each other. They're not, right. They're not marrying for romantic reasons. There, there's no compelling reason here other than them arguing that they're marrying because he has to take care of the kids. And the only way he can do that is if they're married. As somebody pointed out, get a nanny. Right. Get a nanny, fly your gram, fly your mom out. She's taking care of your kids full time. Now, uh, Sterling Nash, Nash said something interesting. Don't put it past by as he, uh, threw George Anthony under the bus for his client, Casey Anthony, meaning, um, Casey Anthony's father. It's kind of interesting, but was, was her father uh, footing the bill for, for him though? Right. Well, and, and again, like, I, mean, I don't, I don't think it would be difficult for Baez to throw Mario under the bus. In fact, I think that would be simple. The problem is that the prosecution is going to tell a more compelling story about the connections between Shanna and Mario and right. Like it's, it's, I don't know if you can tell this story by eliminating Shanna Gardner from the narrative. Right. Exactly. Shannon, a check. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> a check. Yeah. This was clearly maybe, yes, she had a breaking bad because she didn't know what she was doing. Um, right. Couldn't, so, couldn't, they have just, couldn't they just have used Venmo or Cash App or something? <laughs> I mean, a check? Right, I know. Um, I, I do think that this is a case of, about money, and I think it's a case that people are truly wondering, at least I am, like, what can money do? truly buy because according to the gardeners and the way Shanna was raised, they believe money can buy anything that anybody can conv be convinced with money, bought with money. Um, Jared, Mario, Shanna. Um, and I think in many ways, you know, they hire the best, the best defense. Well, I don't know if he's the best, the most well-known defense attorney money can buy. And I think that is the ultimate question right now that I have. Maybe, maybe I'm speaking, maybe I'm projecting it onto other people. I am curious, what can money buy? It certainly bought Shanna a nicer outfit for court last week. Baez has had some, some huge victories, but I, I don't think Harvey Weinstein would agree. So he's, he's not infallible. Harvey Weinstein, I think, sued Jose for his money. He wanted his million back. Oh, really? Yeah, not surprisingly. But yeah. And also, I mean, it, it the other there's another interesting question, not just the one you raised, but there's another interesting question in this case, which is this is this is a family, the Gardner family, that is the the family culture revolves around money. They're immersed in money. They although they don't they don't they won't tell you that 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 they they run in many ways they run their family like a business right and so part of, i think part of your question is what happens to a family when money is the only currency <laughs> of communication and connection right what what happens to a family that's primarily driven by money
Sorry, I was on mute. Oh. While I typed. I agree. I agree. That's where I am. I'm very curious. Oh, this family driven by money. What happens now? Next? How will this end? Yeah. How will this end? What don't we know? We need. I think we need to pursue that. Quite. You know. Try to answer that question about why. Why did they marry? What was the purpose? What's what's behind that? Mm -hmm. If there is a contract with the Gardner family, what, what's that about? What does that mean? Yeah. I think there are a lot of secrets. And while we've learned a lot from a lot of people, I have a feeling this case is going to bring more secrets out than you or me even know. Yeah, well, the, you know, the Murdoch the Murdoch case had all kinds of secrets. I, I think you're going to you're going to see something similar here as we learn more and as people dig deeper. So we will stay with it. Right. We will. We will stick with it. And some people are saying, yeah, they think they're untouchable. I think my ultimate question is can money to an extent make people untouchable? We shall see. We shall see. Uh, Henry Tennant also, I want to say, you know, he's talking. I, I'm curious what he's going to say. That's an important part of this too, right? Henry, Henry talked, Henry confessed. He's already, yeah, he's already taken a deal. So Henry's taken a plea deal. So it'll be interesting to see if he, right. Part of his deal is that he has to, testify against some of the other co-conspirators. So we'll see what he says and what he knows. That'll be, yeah. Does he know, does he know Shanna Gardner? Has he met her? Uh, I mean, presumably you would think that Mario would keep him removed from any access to the Gardner family, but I, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? All right, everyone. Thank you for this hidden hour. So good to be with our gems. I am going to, so the first thing I'm going to do when we end is I, I actually already have the tab open patreon.com and I have all, I have all of these documents, hundreds of pages. I'm just going to download them onto my computer and then throw them up on patreon.com slash hidden true crime. And then we already have um, the hundreds of pages of Shanna and Jared's custody battle documents on there as well. So go to a collection called FOIA and court documents. That's where we keep, we actually keep so much there. Thousands of pages of Daybell. Um, we have a lot there. So um, it's a collection we're keeping whenever we work to get these documents, we share them there. Thank you to everyone that supports us. Thank you so much to our supporters tonight. Thank you to those who gift memberships. We want all of our gems to be members. We know that not everyone has the ability to pay for that every month, but we we love it when people support that. And we're going to start doing more member only lives. I did one last week and I was like, this is nice. I feel like a safe space where like some random person scrolling who stops to see like won't judge me as harshly. You know, I can just be me. So that was really fun. We're going to get Dr. John on a few of those as well. So thank you, everyone. And uh, we hope you have a great night. Good night. Good night.